Welcome to the Alan Elkan Interviews, an unprecedented window into the minds of some of the most well-known and respected figures of the last 25 years. Carlo Cabarino, you are executive chairman of the Aeon Europe, Middle East and Africa. You have 22,000 people working in your area and you are a member of the executive committee of the whole company, right? Of the Aeon Corporation. Aeon yeah. Corporation. Yeah. And you are also president of a charity, a very important charity called the San Patriniano Foundation. Yeah, San Patriniano Foundation is, is the largest place in the world to recover drug addicted people. It's based in Rimini, has been entirely financed by the family Moratti, mainly Gianmarco and Letizia Moratti. Hosts 1,300 uh, young people, mainly young. This is not only the biggest, but the most successful in the world. Having 72% of them, they recover from drug addiction. You were raised in an aristocratic uh, family in Genova. In Genova. In Genova. You worked mainly in Milan, London, and Madrid. But your heart is in Genoa. My heart is in Genoa. And somehow you went back. Can you tell me more? So I, I would say not only my heart, but my tummy is also, you know, it's a very strong feeling I have with my hometown. And uh, having the type of life I do, I take uh, 300 planes per year and traveling so much. Genoa is the place that is not only is a great love, but it's a great point of reference in my life. You need a point of reference in your life, especially with the type of life I do, to give you stability. It's the place that gives me stability. Part of your family is still there, but what did you do? So I bought an historic palace. Really? Why? When I left in 1982, I've been all over the world and I've been working all over the world. And, uh, and, but I always remain, you know, very attached to my origin and my place, to my hometown. And I always had a dream to have a nice place there, an historic place. A couple of days before Christmas, like uh, seven years ago, I was having dinner in a very special restaurant in the center of the town. And I heard it was for sale. And so I spoke to my eldest brother that lives in Genoa. I asked information about this place. And almost joking, he told me that it was for sale Palazzo Spinola. That for me, is one of the most beautiful in the very important Renaissance street. And from there, I started to dream, not to sleep in the night, thinking about that until I was able to buy it. And I did. And since then, I invest all my spare time in restoring, buying furniture, buying paintings. And um, I've been encouraged also from my local friends, families, the local authorities, that they support me in these initiatives. But what are you going to do? Are you going to live there? I don't have a plan. Certainly, certainly I want to spend time there. Certainly I want to give the opportunity to other people to visit this place, to the local students or foreigner students to study the very important frescoes and the architecture that has been already studied by Rubens when he came to Genoa. This is one of the palaces. Rubens uh, made, a, when he visited Genoa, that was about 1608, he was really impressed by the local palaces, not only by their beauty and their richness, but also by the effectiveness and modernity of their architecture. And he made a famous study of that, and my palace is one of those that has been uh, meticulously studied by him. Is it going to be an art center? Or? This is something I'm, I'm studying with uh, several people. I've been visiting, for example, some English uh, foundations where they've been able, they have been able to combine these three things together. They are still private houses, but they are also uh, museums and uh, a center of uh, culture. What is so special about Genova? First of all, I think um, that is so hidden. It's a hidden place. It's very attractive This um, in a world that shows everything. It's fascinating how this place has been able to remain a hidden place. That is part of the culture of the Genoese, not to show. 
why there are so many hidden palaces and works of art in Genoa? Genoa, I think, is a town in Italy, maybe even more than, uh, than Rome, where historic families live still in their own palaces and they do not change addresses since 500 years. These families were the richest families in the world. In 1550, 30 of the 50 richest families in the world are in Genoa. In that particular moment, 30% of the gold of the world is in Genoa. And 80% of the public debt of the huge empire of Charles V, King of Spain, is in the end of these families. Was in the end, in that moment. So in that moment, they had 30% of, of the those family. But they were traders, bankers? Uh, they were mainly, they were uh, ba bankers and financiers. And you will love this story. There is a, a theory of mine, but most of this huge tradition in finance, this fantastic ability to manage not only trading and commerce, but finance has been teached from the Jewish escaping from the Inquisition on 1492. They escape and they go everywhere in the world. But for example, why in Venice they have been put in the ghetto? In Genoa, they mixed a lot with the local upper class. And this was probably not only with the Jewish, but this is like our friend uh, Renzo Piano was, uh, I've seen the, other, the, the, the interview the other day, not the interview, uh, that uh, he was saying that the strength of Genoa was this one of accept people from all over the world, having this port, accepting people from all over the world. Despite the fact to be so closed, especially in business, they have been able to accept and have been always very tolerant and open to differences. No, On one side, they were very close people and they were the very... The Genoa has decayed, has... Uh... It's a huge decadence. Mm. Why? There were fantastic periods like those I described before, like 50, from 1520 to 1627, where uh, Felipe III, the grandson of Charles V, got bankrupt. But then they've been, again, enormously rich again uh, 200 years later. Why? Because again, they have been able to do business all over the world. And like this, uh, it was at the end of uh, in the 18th century, 1860, so the they, richest man in the world, they have days. a huge comeback. And again, 100 years later, Why? two years later, they started to do business. Instead with the Spanish, they, it took a long time, but then they started to do the same business with the French. There was a newcomers, there were a lot of newcomers, uh, family that are not so old like the Dori of the Spinola, but you know, the Durazzo, who were family, new families. There were new families, arrived new families and recreate in the same businesses, finance, especially finance trade. They create an enormous amount of uh, money in 1750. And then? And then again in 18, uh, 1850 with uh, Raffaele de Ferrari, the richest man in the world, the Duke of Galliera. It is famous to be the famous Duke of Galliera. He built all the railway of Europe with the Rothschild family. Together, the Rothschild family and uh, Raffaele de Ferrari built uh, the entire railway system of Europe. And uh, he created a great school of entrepreneurs like the Piaggio, the Perrone, he was the Iraggio, um, Bombrini. These were the richest family in Italy. The new gen just a fact, gen the generation fact that the, the children of these people were not so capable again. There was another moment where there was the, 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 the big ship on the Costi Ravana, but then the, a, a huge decadence. But uh, Genoa is a history of a thousand years and uh, it was independent. It was an independent state for 750 years. And uh, we, we saw already the, this uh, the decadence and then come, big comeback. So you think there will be a comeback? But I want to be optimistic. It's difficult to think in the short period that can have a central role like he had in the past in this global world. But I think in this moment it's so economically attractive that might have a very surprising renaissance. Genoa is, very, is still a, a geographically positioned in a fantastic place, in the center of Europe, with a fantastic climate. And uh, I think Genoa should become attractive for the young people, because it's very cheap. It might position itself with some characteristics, like California, for the central Europe. So we should invest in school, university, 
at prices that are enormously competitive. That, for example, the close Milano. So the close Milano, it's, it's, Milano is very expensive now for a young boy that wants to come to study in a good university. Milano. And I think that the administrators of Genoa, they should think on the, the long-term plan to compete with these towns to attract young talent from all over Europe. What about cultural tourism? We can do much more than today with cultural okay. tourism. I think the previous administrations, there is a huge lack of marketing. And while Nice is considered part of the Côte d'Azur, Genoa is not considered part of the Portofino Riviera. Because in the past, it was a place of factories, it was a place of, uh, of work and not of pleasure. And what is your role in all that? I will uh, certainly try as much as I can to support the actual administration to create an interest in people to, to, and attract investments and interest around Genoa. I believe that um, people are very curious to know new destinations. And uh, most of the people that travel have been several times to Florence, Venice or Rome, but never to Genoa. And I believe that to spend the period in between Genoa, Portofino and the Cinque Terre is something that can compete with any other destination. If a Korean, a Chinese, American want to spend a week in this part of the world, I promise you they won't regret it. What is attractive? All these things, the culture, the, the entire culture, one of the things we have to do is to invest in uh, modern hotels and organize the tourism in a much more structured way. way. At the same time, this immobilismo delay is also the reason why Portofino, Camogli, Le Cinque Terre, they are so completely untouched, like few other coasts of the Mediterranean. Genova was recently wounded by the fall of the Morandi Bridge. Yeah. Prince of Piano is working on the new bridge, right? Was it a big wound for Genova? It was uh, a disaster. But from all the disasters, uh, you can create. You put it here, you know, that's why Piano... So Piano is my favorite uh, citizen, a Genoese citizen. Not only mine, but it's very much loved in Genoa. He is a sort of flag of this desire Redemption. Desire of redemption. Desire of redemption that I feel in this moment there is an, uh, with the local population. Him and Marco Bucci, the actual mayor, are a formidable team that I will try to support with all my resources. Another famous citizen of Genova is Beppe Grillo. Do you know him? No, I never met him. He has been incredibly successful. You, you would like to meet him? But certainly it would be very interesting. I would be very curious. A man that has influenced so strongly the last 10 years of in such an innovative way Cosa? the Italian politics. How is he perceived in Genova? Certainly his sense of humor, when he was a comic, he was representing exactly the famous sarcasm of the local people. And people consider him one of them. From Gino Paoli to Fabrizio De André, Genova has a tradition of musicians that strongly influence the Italian young generations in the recent past. No? If you spend some time in Genoa, you wouldn't be surprised of the strong feeling could create to everyone the lights of this period, especially the wind, the sea, the sun that born and die always on the sea. Make this place a unique magic that, as I told you at the beginning, goes directly, not only to your, to your heart, but very strongly to your stomach, Tommy. And this strange mix of melancholy and joy. You went away in the big world at age 21, and you came back just before your 60s. Right? Yeah. Is this in the tradition, are you ultimately a great romantic? I am. And uh, I believe in uh, that the navigators come back to their home place, like my hero, Andrea Doria. Actually, I think that 
Netflix should should do a, a nice story about Andrea Doria. It would be certainly interesting. He lived up to 93, but he was sailing around the world until 62. I hope to last so long. Is your family very attached to Genoa? Enormously, enormously. For my father, Genoa has been always the center of the world, despite the fact that he also has been traveling and lived for a long time in South America. Are you a businessman? I'm a businessman. I'm more an executive than a businessman. I've been very lucky to learn from the different employers that I had. The very Genoese family Pratolongo, the family Moratti, that was a huge example for me, and the Americans from Chicago. They teach me not ever be happy, never be satisfied, but always trying to improve yourself. From all of them, I learned enormously. But if I have to remind something that really was a great teaching in my life, I remember the first day of work, the old Mr. Pratolongo called me in his room where we had a long conversation. And at the end, he told me, Carlo, remember, he is not rich who owns money, but who is able to produce money. Alan L. Can interviews.